Oh, someone's falling over. We've had an accident. Behind the scenes. <laughs> That's another reason why you should ride a velomobile. Billy Ray was a preacher's son, and when his daddy would visit, he'd come along. When they gather around and started talking, that's when Billy would take me walking. Out through the backyard, we go walking. Then he look into my eyes. Lord knows to my surprise. Good morning and welcome to the Velo Ads YouTube channel, the channel all about human powered vehicles such as this one. This is the Milan SL Mark 7. The Milan is one of the fastest uh, human powered vehicles that money can buy. So um, if you're new to the channel, I'll just quickly take you through the spec of the bike. I've owned this bike for four months now. So this is after four months, what do I think of the bike? How has it been performing? Has it lived up to my expectations, etc, etc. So let's dive in. It's quite a few different uh, Velomobile models because the generic name uh, for a human powered vehicle like this is a Velomobile, all one word, Velomobile. There are a lot of different models made by different manufacturers. Uh, some are made for touring, some are, some are lighter, which are excel at climbing, some are for racing, it totally depends what you're after. And some are pretty good all rounders. So um, I've got quite a few Velomobiles and um, I have an Alpha 7, and a Schnuck, which is one my newest Velomobile, and the Milan, and a Quattro Velo. So you're going to have to check out my Velo Ads YouTube channel if you want to see what all the different models are about and how they all compare to each other. So let's just quickly show you around the Milan SL so you get an idea of what a human powered vehicle is about. So we start on the outside. Firstly, at the back, because we're here, you have these tiny little Kellerman lights, which are super bright. And as you can see, that's your daytime running lights either side at the back. And then uh, when you need to signal to other road users which way you would like to turn, you have an indicator stalk here. And the brake lights are also included in those tiny lights. Phenomenal, hey? These holes here vent air out of the tail of the Milan so if you've got the visor open windscreen or the knacker duct on the front air will come in and instead of slowing you down it will just chuff out the back <laughs> okay so if we move along now we have uh, mirrors here on both sides these are the s basically the smallest mirrors that you can get you can get circular mirrors which are quite a lot bigger on their own or with cones aerodynamic cones on the back or the z-file mirrors which i like and they work really well so we've got z-file mirrors we have a 26 inch rear wheel there it's a 559 and then on the front we have 20 inch uh, wheel which is a 406 um I'm, I'm running schwalbe ones on the front i this morning i took off my continental uh, gt racing tire and put on a uh, continental uh, contact speed on the back which is a sort of winter tire all rounder really we have turn signals at the front as well which i'll show you now and we have a lupine sl ax uh, front light which has a uh, high beam and low beam super bright that is on the dim setting so you can imagine when you're out in the countryside at night it lights up the place like a uh, like an eclipse coming up here now we have the NACA duct, which is you can open and close to determine how much uh, ventilation you want coming through. There's a little toggle inside. And here is an access hatch. So if you need to replace your pedals or adjust the front mech, you can get in there and do what you need to do. And then that just, that is just held on with uh, Velcro around the edge there. Velcro is your friend. <laughs> right, so let's jump inside and I'll just show you quickly what we have in here. Okay, so we have a rear suspension unit in the back there. We have the carbon rear swing arm as well in the rear, which I'll show, just point to now. The seat is removable. So here we are, here's the rear swing arm. And then the, oops, and then the suspension unit it's just uh, just above that. We have a little parcel shelf here where you can throw some bits and bobs in. A uh, big space on the left here, which I stick all my bags and things, camera equipment down there. 
and then uh, towards the front we have a map reading light here which is this one which is really good at night if you drop something in the bike and you need to find it and um, switch that off and that's the light for your head the switch for your headlights and then also we have the brakes here this is your brake lever these are the shifters Shimano XT Dior change up change down it's an 11 speed we've got two chain rings on the front we've got a 65 tooth and a 39 tooth on the front and we've got an 1136 cassette on the rear and of course the cat eye speedometer there but this is your lupine battery which runs the indicators brake lights and the headlights and the magic red button the horn and that's your little toggle for the knacker duct on the front push in to close and pull down to open so basically that's a that's a quick overview of the milan sl the milan sl is one of the fastest models available um, it's a racing machine basically um, designed in germany and made in romania by velimabu world now so pretty much all human powered vehicles have drum brakes um, i know you're thinking drum brakes why don't they have disc brakes well disc brakes are not really up to the job when you stick them on a human powered vehicle your brake pads would wear out very quickly on a disc brake setup um, and would need adjusting all the time it's been tried and it doesn't work they've tried it so they go for drum brake zero maintenance um, and you've got pretty much enough braking power i mean unless you're hurtling down mountains for a, a long duration then the brakes can overheat so it's something to be wary of there's two two size options with the drum brakes 70 mil 90 mil brakes i recommend you know it's not that much of a, a weight gain to go for the 90s over the 70s and you get a lot more braking power so I always go for 90 mil brakes and on this one we've got 90 mil drum brakes so that's that's a good uh, sort of upgrade to go for um, we've got this hood option here which is the battle mountain hood battle mountain is a place in Nevada in America where they do the uh, uh, speed contests with human power so um, I think the record at the moment is about 89 miles an hour pedaling amazing so this hood was designed for battle mountain for that competition in Nevada so it's basically more aero version of the standard hood which you can spec on this bike as well but i mean compared to my alpha 7 the milan weighs 24 kilograms my alpha 7 weighs 21 kilograms so it's a lot three kilos lighter so it makes a difference when you're climbing but then um the milan is is an out and out racing machine so i'll say the milan is a, probably a fraction quicker than the alpha 7 and now the other thing is I've got the snook now which seems to be very fast so I'm sort of uh, not quite sure which is the fastest yet and um, I raced the Milan last season at the, with the British Human Power Club awesome 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 season of racing in these amazing machines so if, if ever you want to see them in action or you want to try one out get yourself down to the British Human Power Club you can find them online I'll put a link in the description turn up to one of the races and see what these things can do or you can go onto the Global Cycling Network uh, YouTube channel and one of their presenters Hank comes along and races with us in one of my bikes quite a few times actually and uh, he's converted to the dark side so yeah check it out so you may ask what's it like to ride this thing you need to wear road cycling shoes clip into the pedals so you lock your feet onto the pedals so when you're pulling the pedal up you're putting power down and accelerating and when you're pushing you're you're putting your power into forward motion so for the whole revolution of the pedal you're going forward what's this thing like to ride phenomenal i mean the bike is so quick you do have to think a lot faster than you would do on your conventional upright bike because the speeds that you attain in this thing you are flying towards <laughs> obstacles and things and cars and whatnot on the road and so you really do have to look ahead and plan ahead and brake in plenty of time because uh, your speeds go up drastically so it takes some time to get used to that but the view through the windscreen is phenomenal uh, you feel like you're in a fighter jet actually and uh, cornering is something else and I'd advise like newbies to riding velomobiles if you can get down to a racetrack and join in and have a few races and really learn 
how to master the handling of the Velomobile, i.e. cornering. There is a limit to cornering. You can tip these. It's pretty difficult to do it, but a novice could tip them. Whereas when we race them, I've been racing a while, if you're coming up to a tight corner and you want to keep your speed up, you just shift your bum across in the seat a bit, or the whole of your body, just to keep, the, if it's a left-hander, you would shift yourself onto the left-hand side, just to keep the left wheel, front wheel down, so you're not doing that. And you usually know when you're on the limit round the corner anyway, once you've raced them a few times, because uh, as you're cornering, the front wheel will tap like that, up and down, on the tarmac, so you think, ah, I'm on the limit. Another thing you have to get used to, is the are the gears so changing up gear as you would driving a car if you if you drive so basically you stop at the lights you make sure you're in first gear lights change to green start pedaling second gear a bit more speed third gear a bit more speed fourth gear a bit more speed fifth all the way up and then uh, when you're slowing down to stop at a junction or at the lights you start changing down again and make sure you're in first or second gear ready to go that's a, a mistake you make when you're when you're a newbie is stopping in a uh, gear 11 and <laughs> find it pretty hard to get going other than that uh, the steering is pretty intuitive on the tiller but uh, i'll show you the tiller actually and show you how you steer the thing so the tiller would be there when you're when you're riding and you would turn it like that to go left or right price wise the milan starts at ten thousand euros the milan is handmade so it's uh it takes a few weeks to build the thing um, the waiting list used to be about nine months. I think it's around four months at the moment. So not too bad. So after four months of riding the Milan SL Mark VII Velomobile, has it lived up to my expectations? Yes, it has. Has it exceeded them? Yes, it has. Um, it's by far the fastest Velomobile that I've owned. Um, We've now got another new model in, so we'll see how it compares to that. I thought I'd compare the times from the Mark V versus the Mark VII. So we're going to go to Gravesend, which is a circuit I'm quite familiar with. And I know most of the corners, so I thought that'd be a good comparison rather than a track that I struggle on. This is the 20-minute Criterium. It's an oval track that we do up on the top half of the track. And uh, so, you know, it's just flat-out speed, really, with the couple of corners which aren't too sharp in the milan mark 5 this was uh, my fastest lap time was 33 seconds so not bad and my average speed was 24.42 miles per hour okay so now let's compare this to the mark 7 now we're going to go to 2021 uh, the year 2021 which is upgrade time i'm in the milan sl mark 7 and we're on the same track so we're going to Gravesend times uh, 20 minutes again on the loop at the top end of the track. Fed multi-track. I should be in this race. Here we are. I actually won that one. Woohoo. Lap time was 33 seconds times three. My average speed was 25.13 miles per hour, which is faster than... Yeah, so that's basically a mile per hour faster than the Mark V on the same track. So, progress. 2020, so I would have been riding, so I would have been riding the Mark V Milan SL. Um, this is a 45 minute criterium on the lower track, which is quite a technical circuit. There's a couple of very scary corners. Um, we've had a few crashes at that one last season. Um, so basically, let's have a look. So 45 minutes on the lower circuit, miles average speed was 21.37. Fastest lap was two minutes and 13 seconds. And I finished the race in 47 minutes and three seconds. Now we go to 2021. I'm now in my new Mark 7 Milan SL with the battle mounting hood. Um, let's have a look for a comparison what we did here. There you go. Average speed was 21.95 miles an hour. So that's a little bit quicker, actually, than the old Mark V. And my lap, fastest lap time, two consecutive laps, was 2 minutes and 10 seconds. So I've shaved 3 seconds off of those, 6 seconds off of those 2 laps. <laughs> Let me know. But as you can tell, my lap times are quite inconsistent, and that's just me mucking up some of the corners when I do string them together but I'd say overall the bike seems to be quicker anyway so that's good 
And there you are. I hope that gives you a general overview. Um, you may say, oh, well, so you said this is a racing machine. Is it an out and out racing machine? Could I use this every day? The answer is yes, you could use it every day. You could commute to work in the Milan, especially the Milan Mark 7, because it's been refined now and it's a lot more comfortable than the previous models. The suspension is a lot better. Um, I could have this as my only bike and it would be fine, even over speed bumps. I mean, the really high speed bumps in London, you will scrape the humps at the bottom, but it's not the end of the world. You still get over them. Can car drivers see the Velimobile? Uh, I'd say that's one of the only downsides to owning a Velimobile. Everybody sees it. <laughs> you stop at a cafe and you have to prepare yourself for, you know, lots of questions because people don't see them very often. So they're all going to wonder what it is. Is it electric? How is it powered? Um, in a nutshell, everybody sees this machine. Um, you get a lot of car drivers actually driving and filming with their phones, but you get used to that. It's so unusual. And I find that the more unusual the, the bike is that you ride, the more it's noticed. When I'm up on a conventional bike like my Brompton, you know, people just, car drivers just don't see you. They pull out on you all the time. But this thing, they actually wait for you to pass so they can follow you and film you. So yes, the bike is very visible and seen all the time. We've had about three road cyclists come off their bikes on this roundabout, coming down the straight there, going around the roundabout and just sliding out. So there's a lot of uh, slippery diesel or fuel or oil on that roundabout. And since we've been filming, this poor chap has just smashed himself onto the floor. So um, yeah, you've got to be pretty careful. Anyway, back to the video. It's a lot safer on three wheels. So in summary, awesome machine, the Milan SL Mark 7, one of the fastest Velimobiles money can buy and usable every day, even in a city like London. Phenomenal. Velo ads out.